Okay, Reggie, before we get into this week's questions uh, and topics, is there anything that you wanted to speak on or talk about before we get going? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right quick, um, just shout out to the Capricorns once again. You know, we made it kind of quick last uh, last segment, but uh, shout out to you guys. And then also, uh, if we can, uh, I want to advise people because I don't know if y'all noticed, y'all, one out of the four people that y'all know noticed lately been having the flu or a cold or something. So just want to advise you guys. I know it's a big topic of conversation with a lot of y'all that's against it, but if I can help one person, I tell you, that's all I'm here for, to see if I can help that one person. Go get your your flu vaccination, and I'm going to say it, get that last dose of the jab. I know a lot of y'all don't want to hear it, but I'm on y'all firm believer in when you catch it and you got the jab, you don't get as sick. And I wished uh, they had the jab available before I contracted this COVID. And uh, trust me, it was life changing for me. But uh, other than that, uh, you know what, Don? I got to touch on the subject. I got to touch on the subject. And I know I'm getting off base, but uh, I... Boy, I gotta throw out throw out something. Hopefully, this uh, air before they do episode nine of the podcast. But we about to see what type of journalist Dave Mays is. If he don't, <laughs> if he doesn't come with a Cat Will story with Suge Knight, who was real uh, instrumental in um, in Cat Will's life in the. Uh, from about 2012, I think it was, to about 2014, 2015, when they got caught up in that case. Y'all remember that? I know a lot of y'all might not remember when Suge and Kat, and one of the reasons that Suge Knight uh, went on and took that deal, because he was also facing, uh, you know, Kat ended up only getting probation. I love it. But Suge was still facing a three strike on that case as well. That's why I always tell y'all was one, he had three three cases pending, meaning Chug, and all they had to do was convict him on one of them, and he would have been a three striker, and he would have been 25 years to life instead of just a straight 28 years. It's a big difference, y'all. When y'all learn, hopefully none of y'all ever, ever have to learn, but that L means a lot. Because this dude's still in prison that I know, heard of, has seven to life. There used to be something called three to life. Don't know if there's any three to life or no. But that's up to, that's when you go before a parole board. Just throwing out some education on that. But I'm saying all this to say if Dave Mays neglects to talk to Suge Knight about Cat Wilm stories, then he don't know Suge Knight, and he shouldn't be uh, involved in, in that that with with Suge, and you know because Suge got some great Cat Wilm stories, uh, and y'all would love, would love it. And Cat is hot right now, right? Cat assassinated <laughs> about ten to fifteen comedians with that with that segment that he did with uh, our boy Shannon, uh, with the Shea Shea uh, podcast. I mean, if y'all can't tell, didn't notice, that was written. These are things that, that he just laid out. That was planned. <laughs> that was a planned cat attack. I don't think uh, Shannon knew that, that, that he was going to take over the podcast like that, but he did a hell of a job of scripting it out. A lot of the things y'all don't know, cat been preaching... Way, I bet, I can't wait till this week to come up because everybody going to be coming up with all of their tapings and with the iPhones and stuff of Cat Wheels telling stories. I bet you at least five of those stories he tell pop up where he's been preaching since 2010. And that's why he got banded. That's why, you know, I'm not one of them to say that he was on drugs like a lot of people say. He, I don't think he did a... I don't believe Dave Chappelle was on drugs. I just think Dave Chappelle just went crazy and got into some black power shit or something like that. 
to make him uh, walk away from that $50 million deal he had with uh, Comic View. But Cat Williams got banded because he was saying all of this stuff before. He just found a platform to put it out and, and put it all together. And man, tore up the internet. Killed it. Didn't even give us no good content for this <laughs> for upcoming days because trust me, who want to watch us? <laughs> when you got Cat Wim over there and everybody cutting up all his stories and putting video footage to what he's been saying, it was a great week for YouTube for people that was in the Cat Wilms field. I know this channel is not in the Cat Wilms field and that's why John's like, oh, we ain't got nothing to talk about with Cat Wilms. We, we not in the Cat Wilms business. Totally get it. But shout out. Hope to hear some Cat Wilms stories from Shug. Because she got some. I remember going up to, uh, uh, I'm just throwing this out. Hopefully you hear about it and he'll tell it. To this shop called D's Auto Body. They had a $300,000, $400,000 Rolls Royce up there. Where those niggas was in there with some, some girls. And they must have got the fighting in the car. <laughs> well, anyway. There was a lot of blood in there in that Rolls Royce. So I always wonder. Where is that chick? <laughs> Where is that chick? Hopefully they can explain that. But man, uh, Cat Wilms and 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 um, Shell got some great stories. Uh, I love to hear their stories, and I hope uh, Collect Calls a touch on that. But I got a feeling they not. <laughs> but yeah, It'd be interesting to see what happens this week. But once again, shout out to Cat Wilms. I'm one that believes over 95% of what he said in that, that um, on that podcast is true. And I can tell you, 75% of the stuff that he said, I didn't heard before. I didn't heard him say it. Cause I'm a, I was a major Cat Cat Wilms fan. I go all the way back to the uh, the Lab Factory or the Chocolate Factory, the one that was on Sundays that he used to go and perform with my boy Pookie. Anybody that was in the com the comic scene, y'all know Pookie. He had Chocolate Sunday every Sunday nights. And I was following Cat back then and uh, helping Pookie with some financing back then. Shout out Pookie. Don't know what you've been doing or how you doing. Hopefully everything's still well with you, brother. So um, just spoke on that. That's all I wanted to say about the Cat Wells. If you want me to tell some Cat Williams stories in a later episode, uh, you hit, ask me the questions and I'll respond. But I know you got a list of questions you want to ask me, so let's let's get going. Yeah, just in case they don't tell the stories, um, are there any ones that stick out in your mind in, in regards to Cat Williams and Suge that maybe he told you that, or, or maybe that you're aware of that you can talk about? Yeah, you gotta remember, I wasn't around Suge during that time. I was just communicating with him. I appreciate him one time. I had a homeboy uh, that was trying to do a show. And he was like, man, your boy Suge is managing Cat Williams. And he, and he got Cat here. I'm trying to do a show with him. And I remember calling and getting him and Shug on the on a three-way call. And Shug even told me then, he said, Red, this your boy, right? And I was like, yeah. He said, well, Reg, if that's your boy, I I don't know when Cat going to show up to a show and when he's not going to show up to the show. I wouldn't advise you investing no money in Cat right now because he's on one right now. Suge has never said or indicated that Cat was on any type of drugs like everybody was saying. Um, so I'm not going to put that on Cat. I know he drinks and all of that. Cat adamantly de denies ever being on anything strong. <laughs> so that is usually when people say that, that is usually mean they smoke in, uh, weed and, and uh, alcohol. But the way Cat was acting back in the, the mid 2000s, ah, I might. That's that five percent where I say I think he's lying about. But hey, I wasn't around him, so I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me if Cat was doing a little bit more than weed and alcohol 
back in the 2000s because of the way he was uh, uh, not showing up to shows and missing dates. Y'all remember that little kid that was in the uh, closet? A lot of people forget about that. They called the police and said Cat had him hiding in the closet. Y'all remember him getting in the fight and getting choked out by that little 14-year-old boy when they were playing football and stuff? So Cat was, was wilding out back in the mid-2000s. He appears to be back on the right track, and so that's great. Uh, but yeah, Cat and Chug was out there wilding out uh, for a while, about at least three or four years to, to, until the point where Chug eventually got in trouble. For those of y'all don't know, with the photographer, him and Cat Williams was together, and that's when uh, they took a picture of him and his son that he uh, that he was always talking about, legend. And Chug, you know, didn't want his son's picture out there in the tabloids and stuff. He said, like, like Chug said, you can take a picture of me, but don't be taking no picture of my, my kids. Um, and, um, and so he was being protected of that. And then that's when they had, but those niggas was out there being pimps. <laughs> yeah, I remember I told y'all Chug went through a pimp, pimping stage. And that's when I guess they had the two girls go allegedly and uh, beat up the photographer and take the uh, the camera from him, which both of them uh, eventually got convicted of. Suge played out, took uh, took the incident with, uh, with um, you know, Terry Carter, and so the DA office dropped that charge, and the one with F. Gary Gray, that threatening charge, those were the other two, and they just um, gave him 28 years for the uh, for the incident with Terry Carter. But those were the three cases that were that uh, Shug was facing, and uh, could have got struck out on, and could have got an L behind him. Uh, so that happened with Cat. Cat ended up only getting probation. I wonder if he's still on probation or not. I'm not sure, but I know he uh, just had got a fine and paid probation. Shout out to my boy Big C Style. I remember Big C Style calling me and telling me, Red, Red, what's wrong with your boy Suge? All he wants, the lady wants is her camera back. Is her camera back and this shit could go away. But uh, Big C Style, I'd love to get him on the show one day to tell that story because he was there uh, with them and uh, trying to make that, that situation go, go right. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't. Because Suge is very, very protective of his kids, which uh, that's just Suge. Uh, and I ain't got no problem with him. Glad he is that type of dude. Um, but other than the incident with, I always heard it was two chicks that got into a fight inside of that, that Rolls Royce. And man, they tore that whole dashboard of that car up. And it was. And I'm talking about something I know y'all talking about I'm snitching and all that. But the police came up there and recovered the car. Because Suge and Cat did like a, a fucking Mike Tyson situation. I don't even know how they heard about the car being up there. My boy D's auto body shop in Barrel Flower. Uh, but they came up there and recovered it. I told D, don't get that motherfucker to them. They ain't got no reason. They were gifting that car to you. You know, they were giving you that car. And sure enough, about a year later, Suge called asking about that car. While he was in custody, but D had told him, hey, that car was gone, but those niggas just walked away from that car for some reason. Uh, remember that? I remember one time, uh, Cat, because Cat was very paranoid around people, Suge and his people. He was one that always had guns and, and stuff, and, and my boy Bob Gotti and Suge was talking, and Cat was real paranoid with, with them, where Bobby had a check. And like say, hey, shit, what's up with your homeboy? Tell that nigga, nigga, I'm one of your homies. And situations like that, I remember they used to always been out. Cause that's when I was hanging with those dudes from Grape Street. And they, they, I don't know why people always thought Shug and I had a problem with each other. I used to always tell you, man, that nigga ain't got no problem. We just ain't fucking with each other right now. But neither one of us want anything bad to happen to each other. Still to this day. I believe. I know that's how I feel. And and they was up at a serving spoon in Inglewood up there. And my niggas from, <laughs> from Gray Street was like, man, Reg, we got that nigga Suge and Cat Williams up here. We're up here sitting with some chicks at the serving spoon. What you want? <laughs> what you want? 
I said, nigga, I don't want that. Put that nigga on the phone. And I said, and he got on the phone. I was like, what's up, Reg? And I was like, oh, man, those, what's up, dog? And he said, yeah, I'm just out here, man. Me and Cat had a late night. And we was, uh, you know, hanging out all night. And we just came to get us some breakfast at the service bowl. So, yeah, those, those niggas was hanging. And, and, and that's what Suge was going to be his comeback. You know, because Cat was out there fucking with everybody. Talking shit. Beating everybody out of money. And so who everybody come running to? Mr. Knight for that protection. And that's what Suge was doing. But one thing I got to give Suge credit for, especially with me, on a couple of times that I had called him to try to get Cat to do something, he was always telling people, buyers beware with Cat right now. I can't control him, but I can't control him. And I can't promise you, and niggas that I fuck with, I ain't putting my name or credibility on the line with them to say Cat going to show up to this show or not. And when it comes to Cat Williams and Suge Knight uh, situation, that's one thing I always appreciated from Suge uh, that he told me and probably saved me a relationship with one of my good friends still to this day. I actually was just out playing poker with him last night. Uh, well, two nights ago. And so um, he saved that relationship. Because sure enough, right after that, Cat was wilding out and wasn't showing up to shows. But glad to see Cat doing a comeback. Y'all think Shay Shay is winning from this and all you YouTubers are st still in their content and all of that, posting it up as winning? That ain't who's winning from it. Who's going to win more than anybody right now is his, his cat, his manager, and the fucking local promoters. Because guess who want to go see a show now? Everybody <laughs> want to go see a Cat Williams show right now. And so whoever set up that interview and on YouTube and did that, did a hell of a job. Uh, it's unfortunate he had to bring down a lot of casualties with it. <laughs> on talking about a lot of our black uh, comedians. But you motherfuckers are funny to me, especially you black folks. Y'all praising what Cat Williams did. But let other black folks or me or somebody like that on YouTube be talking, oh, you bringing another black man down. You bring another black man down. Cat Wills, as great of a job as he did, and I, I agree with him, he attacked it 98% of black men and their reputations. And so, now just think about that when y'all all up there with y'all two-way judgments and all of that. Oh, this is great. This is great. Oh, you over there bringing so-and-so down or saying that down or, or, or discrediting another black man. <laughs> it's funny to y'all how y'all have a double-edged sword when it comes to uh, what y'all feel about when people say stuff or talk about other people. But that's my opinion on that. Cat and Shug, man, I wish Shug would be out right now because... I wonder how that relationship would have continued. And uh, don't know what it is to this day. Man, that would, would be a great collect call right now if I was Dave Mays. Uh, a great collect call, and I'm sure Cat would take that call from Shug. Yep. Okay. Did you see on the um, Law and Crime YouTube channel how they did a, like a news story or whatever and they talked about the keefe d bail situation and um talked about being on the phone with the son with the threats and that they uh the feds had relocated one of the witnesses and stuff like that did you see that that um youtube clip well y'all know it ain't me right <laughs> it ain't me but uh yeah i saw that i'm not relocated i'm still got the same background the same green screen and all of that at the same location right <laughs> Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, uh, that's our boy D-Rock that they talking about. Uh, he was working, I heard, at a Midas or a, a oil changing, changing oil at some shop, and, and they had to go pick him up and stop him from working and all of that, which is surprising to me that D-Rock has put that out there in, in the universe, and his son is still in, in the state prison doing life. Surprised he co cooperated on a case like that. But 
it's D Rock, Dirty Rock, uh, who uh, who they talking about? You know, I I hate that he's out there. He's one, in my opinion, out there throwing out an opinion based on, uh, and I don't even know how that's going to hold up in the court of law of that opinion, other than him just certifying that Keefe D was a Southside Compton Crip gang member. That's all that I can think that he could help them with their case because that's hearsay. That's just like John saying that Reggie told me that he killed Biggie. You know, that don't hold up. That don't mean shit. You know, I know all of you motherfuckers, oh, Keefe D going to snitch on you. He going to tell that you killed Biggie. Well, that's an opinion. It's nothing factual or provable about that. It's just one's opinion. Just like when y'all typing your opinions in the comment section now. Those of y'all that do. Those of y'all that saying that he's too dumb to be involved in something like that. That's just an opinion. So opinion is just like an asshole. Everyone has one. And so that's what I feel about, you know, D-Rock, but that's who they're talking about in that. Uh, but, you know, they're saying about the hit list and all of that. I told you on the earlier episodes that I just believe that was people who, houses that were about to get raided or did get raided or that law enforcement at one point of time has spoken to. But it's unfortunate, and I keep telling y'all, you know, the phones in the prison and all of that and, and, and talking to law enforcement without your attorneys is the stupidest thing in the world that you can do. I still not want to believe Keefe was putting out a hit by saying that he's green lit or green light or, or, or somebody's green lit and all of that. I hope that's not what he was doing. I hope he's not that stupid. But then who knows? Compton Unified School District, as I told y'all, has failed Keefe D because the things that he done said to get himself put in this situation is ludicrous to me. And uh, I saw it. I uh, Once again, we're going to uh, uh, have the comment section or put in the comment sections the, uh, the affidavit to the response. Because I know uh, J January the 9th, I gave y'all some bad information before and told y'all that the court date was January the 4th for the bill hearing. But it is January the 9th. I'm doubling down. Still, the bill is only going to be anywhere from 2 to $4 million. But I saw crime. The crime channel picked up on it. And uh, y'all went over there like y'all got new information and was heard of them. But y'all had already heard this a week ago on Bomb First. And those of y'all that wanted to see it, it was pinned up in the comment section the whole, the whole uh, oppose from the DA office, the opposition from the DA office of, of Keefe D getting out, uh, out on bail. It was posted up over a week ago, a week before this crime channel even posted it up. So I'm just saying that to say, when y'all want information, y'all want accurate information, Y'all know where to come to. Y'all come to bomb first. But I'm not going to be up here and try to beat up on Keefe D and put it out there like, yeah, he's out there trying to put hits on people and he's trying to do that because I honestly don't believe uh, that's his intent. I think that was his conversation. That's just him talking, him and his son talking because they're trying to be more than what they are. Keep telling y'all, Keefe D was a... D-boy, a dope dealer, a dude that had shot calling abilities and like that because of his drug connections, not a game banger. Keep trying to explain to y'all the difference between a game banger and a gangster and a D-boy. But I ain't gonna keep reiterating it because I know y'all think everybody is just gang members and game bangers when it's not. It's not, and y'all going to see evidence of this, and y'all going to see the difference coming out because of the way Keefe's moving and has been moving versus how people like James and, and uh, OG uh, Baby Gangster and people like that move. It's a difference, and uh, y'all got to learn them. 
in the YouTube world because there's people that's out there that's really with it where people that's out there just had, was had lucky enough to have a connection. And that's what I take from all of that. That's where I would like to continue to educate people on the YouTube about when it comes to concerning to the situation with Keefe D and, and his uh, gang affiliation and, and why I say he's a D-boy versus a gang member. Yeah. Okay, on um, Art's channel, Gene Deal stated that Greg Cadence did not, or Greg Cading did not solve the Tupac case or the Biggie case and um, that he's just profiting off these stories and they're not factual, in which Art replied and said that that was real talk. I'm curious, if he didn't solve anything, how did certain people know Keefe D to interview him and ask him about the shooting of Tupac? Okay. Yeah, that's the, the thing is, y'all got to understand, if Greg Tating... And he said he didn't leak the, uh, well, he leaked the uh, audio, but he said he didn't record it. He said someone else recorded it. If Greg Cadence wouldn't have recorded that information or the, that, that proffer agreement, do y'all think anybody would ever believe what Keefe D said? It's still about 5 10% of you stupid motherfuckers out there that don't believe it. You know, still, I can see y'all already typing. He didn't do it. He's a pawn. You know, even his... His Tupac sperm donor daddy even, you know, believe that, you know. He's just a pawn. One minute he's talking bad about him, then the next minute he's, he's a government agent. Just because he's such an anti-government uh, person that have no knowledge, don't even know his son. Uh, you all probably seen him in person at a concert more than he saw his son in real life. But my point is, If Greg Cadence and them would have never put that information out there, just as John said, how would he, how would anybody know to ask the questions that they did? So Greg Cadence did solve this case by, by having that tape recording and by interviewing him and by putting him in jail or, 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 or dangling over his head the possibility of going to jail for his drug case that they had on you. Y'all will still be up there in uh, limbo. 50% of y'all probably be still believing that Reggie Wright, Chuck Knight bullshit. I know about 5% of y'all idiots still want to push that because y'all just don't want to be wrong. Y'all y'all, y'all heroes that was on YouTube that y'all looked up to, the rapping idiot and the carpet head and, 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 and the suicide man, Frank and all of them, you know, y'all want to make their, their theory to be right but real people know every interview y'all hear from anybody from L.A. or Los Angeles from the game recently. I mean, I'm not going to show now because everybody always told you. We all been knowing who did this. But all you motherfuckers from U.K. and, and Georgia or, or all got an opinion, or New York, especially New York, got an opinion on... What happened? Just because that's how shit might have happened in your area or something like that. But everybody in LA knows why this happened, when it happened, and talked about it happening. But and so, but still had a 50-50 belief, if y'all keeping it real, on what y'all thought. But until Greg Katie's and that audio came out, and then Keefe D started backing it up with his statements, for whatever reason, stupidly, dumbest criminal in history, go down as dumbest, yes. But, tell the truth, now about 95% of y'all believes it because y'all heard it from Greg Cadence, correct? Because y'all heard it from Keefe D, correct? So, yeah. Ultimately, 
Greg Cadence and his task force, not just Greg Cadence. So I hate that people keep putting it on Greg Cadence. Greg Cadence and his task force team or co-workers solved that case. Now, why is getting prosecuted today? That's a different subject. It was because of people like Mike Dorsey, who kept staying and writing and and and, and uh, harassing <laughs> the hell out of the, the detectives uh, and the DA office of of Las Vegas. It's for people like Vlad, who kept putting the uh, you know the information out there. Uh, uh, BET Chronicles, y'all y'all forget. Their house got raided behind some things that were said, and ultimately, you know, I know they said it was behind some stuff that Shug was doing, but BET Chronicles did it. Murder Rap, Murder Rap, uh, first documentary exposed it. Uh, Murder Rap book, Keefe D's book. All of those things played a part to why. Vegas had got tired and said enough is enough and decided to prosecute Keefe D. Now keep talking about, I keep hearing people on YouTube talking about he has a federal immunity. He don't have a federal immunity. That's a state case. He has a, a queen for the day proffer agreement to talk about it. So they wouldn't pursue a federal case that they had on him. I, I know y'all like to believe that the federal agents can just walk in and take over. There's different systems, y'all. You got court systems for state, court systems for the feds. They don't always agree with each other. Now, the feds can supersede and say, our case going first. But that don't make the state case go away, and vice versa. But I know because of TV and because of YouTube attorneys, we all believe if the feds come in, then state, y'all step aside. That's not how it works. That's not how it works, because if that was the case, Donald Trump wouldn't be worried right now. He would just say, hey, I'm going to go win this election, and then when I become president, all this shit going to go away. Donald Trump could be the first motherfucking president if he win being the president from a state penitentiary. Because it would be nothing that the feds can do if a state judge put him in prison. But y'all need to learn that, research that, and know the difference. I know I went off base on the question. But I'm here to educate you motherfuckers. So you can't say you didn't hear it. Because y'all know everything that I say eventually comes to, to head. It may take a little time. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I heard that interview. It's unfortunate. But the one thing that I get from the interview from Gene, and I kind of do like from that particular energy, that he has some respect for Shook. Uh, he never really shits on Suge Knight. And um, like I shits on Puffy and I shits on Gene or whatever. Uh, but he seemed to have a form of respect for Suge. And if I get anything positive from his interviews, that's what I get. But it's all an asshole. What I mean by that, an opinion. And we all got one. And that's all it is. It doesn't make it factual. And Greg Cadence did. But what I laid out earlier is the one that solved that case, him and his task force, and other channels and people and entities brought the exposure to the case to make Vegas County DA and investigators work up the case. And this has been going on. Y'all think it just happened? I even heard a fool say, because of your interview that they did with the daddy caused them to do that. 
And I was like, man, I've been telling y'all, this shit been going on since about 2019. It had stepped up, the investigation. I showed y'all pictures of them knocking on my motherfucking door from my video cameras in 2021. But, hey, why we keep beating a dead horse? Um, <clears throat> I wanted to get your opinion on the whole um, T.D. Jakes and Diddy situation, how he attended uh, Diddy's birthday party and then a video surfaced of him dancing. Did you see that? Whoa, he's on something, ain't he? I was a defender of him. I was like, man, that's, just because he's at the party laying hands on people while they partying and stuff like that, that don't make him a bad guy, does it? But it's obviously uh, Pastor, Pastor Jake's like to uh, drink a little bit. And when he drink, he get a little wild. It's obvious. You, you can't look at that video and tell that. Uh, then, then okay. I don't want to believe because I'm one of those that I understand. Y'all got to remember, pastors are men. So I always tell people, follow the word from the scripture and not the man. Because if you follow the man and worship men and people like that, trust me, you're going to eventually get disappointed. And so I'm still one of those that don't want to believe that Pastor uh, Jake's uh, is the type of man that, uh, that the accusations are being made now. Uh, but when that video uh, surfaced and I saw that, I said, okay, this is a man and he likes to drink and hopefully he gets this under control because we look up to people like, like him and look at them as different. I agree, totally agree with Gene when he says uh, how we're supposed to have people that look this way. That's what my, my, my grandmother always tell me. That, uh, you know, the reason why it's not that a man is a preacher or something like that is better than another preacher or another man or person, but they're supposed to be the example of how a good man is supposed to, uh, or a good preacher or pastor or person supposed to present themselves in public. Uh, and so it's unfortunate that it's coming out like our pastors. You remember Eddie Long? Y'all remember the Eddie Long situation before he passed away? How we were surprised when uh, he was taking selfie pictures of himself uh, and, and how he was looking. I remember that was very disappointing to a lot of people in Atlanta. Uh, but you know how those niggas is in Atlanta, so y'all probably didn't really care. <laughs> but um, but I have Pastor Jake's. Uh, I hope nothing more come out than what has came out. Your response to a person like me uh, wasn't the greatest because you didn't really deny and say, you said you didn't do those things, but you didn't say, what things you didn't do. And so you was a little vague, but I'm one that still want to leave a man of cloth, a man like that. Uh, I, I, I give him a, um, a bypass and I'm still willing to give him a shot until more evidence come out against him. And I hate that he's uh, getting crucified in the media like he, like he is because I know that's a man that has helped and say a lot of people, especially in the black communities, in the black churches, a lot of people look up to that man. And uh, it's unfortunate how this 2024 YouTube social media can build you up whew, and one swipe break you down. And uh, I hope it doesn't happen to him, but if, if, any of those accusations or allegations come out to be factual, 
then uh, well, all I can do is say we just have to pray for him. Because if you think your mama and daddy didn't eat pussy or suck dick, then you're a fool too. This, we don't want to know about it. And so I bring that up to say that's how we got to look at our preachers. We don't want to know or see what they're doing. But unfortunately, once we learn and hear about people, it, it gives people a reason to be anti-church or Christian and all of that when you have situations like that. And so that's why pastors do have to be leery of being a man of God to not put themselves in that type of situation that he was put into or allegedly put into. But hopefully he was just there to get that money and was out there doing this so he could help continue to uh, to build his, his church and his kingdom. This is what my hope is to why he was hanging around Puff and Tyler Perry and people like that. It's, it's, it's my general, generally hope. And so shout out T.G. Jakes, Pastor Jakes. But I'll just warn you guys, don't let things like that be a reason for y'all to turn off on the church and, and, and religion. Because we all are looking for an excuse not to get up and service God, which, in my opinion, is what we ultimately here for. It's the only reason he created us, is to serve him. Yeah, good luck, Pastor Jakes. Um, on our last uh, set of interviews, you had spoken about Big U and Suge um, pushing up on rappers. Can you go into how they became friends and how they connected? Mm, that's a good question. Good question. Uh, first time I ever heard of, of Suge and, 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 and Big U uh, communicating was through uh, when Suge, uh, I'm sorry, when Big U's brother got killed and shot at a studio. Uh, with Key to Rock, The Realist, and Big C Style, and all of them uh, at Echo Sounds. So Key to Rock came to me and said, hey, uh, you know, Big U, it would be a good look if uh, Death Row would send some flowers and, you know, give the mother a little something to help out. And I thought that was a great idea. And I brought that to Shug, and... Uh, and told Shug that, hey, you know, this guy Big U, his brother was there, even though it wasn't a death row function, no niggas was doing that on their own, uh, corrupt, and the realists met some, had some dudes from Dallas come in town, and they were up there selling beats and, and raps and all trying to make some money, and some dudes came through and, uh, and laid their ass out or got shot. And... Uh, you know, I think we, you know, going to send a little check to help out and uh, send some flowers. And she was like, yeah, 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 that's cool. Yeah, 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 do that. You know, gave me the blessings to do that. And so we did it. And so really I have to give the, uh, I'm sure that was something that went a long way with Big U, but it really was Key to Rock's idea. Shout out Key to Rock. And uh, I think when, she came, when Big U came home, I don't know when he came home. I think it was sometime in the mid 2000s, early 2000s. Big Hugh have always appreciated that. Plus, Suge name was, you know, Suge name was who it was, and Big U, who name, you know, was who 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 it was. And I think those two uh, somehow connected from that. There's been other situations where they helped each other, and I think they probably initially because. The person that Suge used to do that tag team stuff with was my boy, nigga I love, love to this day. To this day, he's no longer with us. But Captain, um, uh, well, I just call him Cap. I ain't gonna put his name out there. Uh, Cap, Shahid, he, he don't mind, he don't mind. And 
That was a dude that I had a lot of respect, and they used to do that tag team stuff with people, <laughs> Suge and Shai. And so I think uh, uh, Big U and you know Suge started doing that with different artists, with different players, different people in in the Los Angeles area, or that was coming to Los Angeles. And so that's how I believe that relationship uh, grew. And I really believe those two dudes still uh, have a lot of respect and love for each other to this day. Uh, and uh, I know they go back and forth, but that's another person that, uh, in my mind, I would like to see Shug do a collect call with, uh, just to see where their, their head's at. And so that's how the Big Hugh and Shug Knight relationship started and got good. And, uh, and yeah, you know, I'm sure with my boy Shug, there have been some incidents where they maybe stopped talking to each other for a while. But I bet you no one can do anything to either one of them without each one of them reaching out to the other and giving them heads up. That's how I believe their relationship is still today. And, uh, yeah, so that's, to answer that question, that's how that happened. Um, can you talk about what happened at the House of Blues concert in 96 before the start? Um, in particular, I think with one of Tupac's um, outlaw people. Can you talk about that story? Oh, okay. I think you're talking about when uh, my boy uh, Fatal. You know, everybody always talk about that gun, that 40 caliber gun that Fatal was trying to uh, to bring into the House of Blues and he got arrested. Well, you know what, John? I got something I want to show you, if you can. I don't know if you can post it or not, but I've been having uh, access to. And I want to show y'all, because people are always talking about Reg didn't care about the outlaws, he didn't care about Tupac, and Tupac didn't like him. I'm telling you, Reg was who everybody ran to when some shit went down. Watch this. Reggie. Frank right there. Frank Reggie. Okay. So, who did Michael Moore come running to to, to be like, hey, they trying to take Fado to jail. They about to take Fado to jail. And who ran his fat ass over there to talk to the cops and be like, hey, hold on, hold on. No, let's work this out. Now, they kept the gun and, and took the gun. I didn't care. I didn't want them having no guns, no way. And so, but he didn't go to jail that night. He didn't have to go fight another case, which he was already had a case for and that he was fighting. But I just say that to show and to talk about that situation to be like, you know, because everybody always like, man, I'm telling you, that's what I was there for. I was the buffer between law enforcement and the artists. And contrary to what all of y'all hear from motherfuckers that wasn't around on YouTube, Outlaws, Tupac, Suge Knight and Death Row people and Right Way people knew to come to Red to make something happen or to talk to people and to work it out because I knew how to talk and work out things with people and make people happy. Now, I know already the, the trolls and all that. Yeah, you took the gun and that's the one you killed Tupac with. Okay, all the guns in America, I got to use a gun that was taken off of Fatal that Kevin Hackey went and eventually got to, to have Tupac killed with. Okay, I guess I gave it to Keefe D. If, and, and, then now, and then him and Orlando and Big Dre and all of them was fighting over that same particular gun. I even heard Mr. Deal talk about the Gecko situation. I thought I have told y'all 
told y'all. Explain to y'all that Gecko is not just made. That is a corporate. That is a gun place. It ain't nobody in their house that just making the Gecko bullets. That 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 is. You go online right now and type in Gecko. It pops up as two distributors in America that sell those bullets. But y'all keep listening to this man and letting this man talk about these bullets, like these are the only certain. Few people can have these, and, and only David Mack is the one that can have these, the bullets. Go online right now. You can buy some gecko bullets. Y'all stop just letting people tell y'all anything and just type in stuff when people say stuff. Research it on your own. I'm so tired of clowns making up shit. Tired of it. Tired of it. Um, can you talk about when Dre was on death row and he was on house arrest for a while? What was he actually on house arrest for and how long was he on house arrest? Do you know? Dre had a couple of situations, a couple of cases. Don't remember how long he was on house arrest, but I know it was during the time, definitely during the time when they did the, uh, I remember we had to uh, uh, get a helicopter to fly him in to make him get there on time. That ring ding dong, uh, the, Friday, the Friday soundtrack. Uh, when they were shooting that video shoot. I remember uh, uh, there's been a lot of commotion about getting him back in time on that situation. But he was, Dre had had reckless driving. He really was a DUI, but you know, that ultimate, that, that badass criminal attorney, I tell y'all, David Kenner, got it dropped down to like a, what they call a wet reckless or a reckless driving uh, case. When he was riding up and down Sunset, I think he even put it in the uh, in the movie when he got mad about something and and was driving his test uh, down you know down the street on Sunset real fast. So he had that situation, and then also the slap with D. Barnes and Damon Thomas bitch ass didn't uh, didn't file criminal charges, but we also had to pay out that judgment that lawsuit who when Dre was slapping people. When Dave, 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 when Dre slapped the shit out of Damon, but um, <coughs> Dre had an alcohol problem at uh, problem at that time, and him and Michelle both were drunks then, and uh, you know when you're drinking, it usually calls you to have other situations or have to have to deal with other legal situations. And that's what was determined to be best for him, which I'm sure he'll tell you to this day was the best thing for it to happen, for him to get himself right. Because I'm a Dr. Dre fan. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I love how Dre just moving about himself. I hate, <clears throat> the only thing I hate about Dr. Dre is that he don't make it right with his kids. And... And, and get it right and try. Give them one more shot. I understand when motherfucking adult kids is just like, then you just be like, all right, fuck them. But I think he deserved because of how he was when he was doing all that drinking and stuff like that. He deserves or they deserve one more shot to try to reconcile their relationships with his kids that his natural blood. Because the kids that y'all see him posting and talking about or, or doing stuff with on social media to this day is really, really still three kids with, with Nicole. And then the one, I believe, the daughter that they have that's at SC that he appeared to have a good relationship with. But he have older kids that I would hope that he's trying to get a relationship with. You say, well, how would you know? Well, the, the one daughter saying she was sleeping in a car uh, just as recent as two years ago, right? Um, and, and was homeless and, and with her grandbaby. But other than that, uh, regarding Dr. Dre, I, I have no issues with Dre. I kind of like how what he's doing, the amount of people that he has helped uh, in the industry be hard to uh, shit on Dr. Dre. Just wonder, why 
Yeah, see who the people that came out this year in the uh, and got for the Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I know Dre's in as a uh, contributor with NWA. I'm just wondering why hasn't he uh, got into the Hall of Fame just yet on his own because of the amount of people and the amount of things that he has done in the um, in the music business. Wouldn't y'all put him in top five? In hip hop, uh, as far as being all around, as far as with the money he's making with Apple and Beats by Dre and the headphones and producing and and the the three or the two two classic albums that he had in the Chronic and Chronic 2001 alone, uh, I think he. He should be uh, considered for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame real soon. I wonder why he's not in. It was shocking to me to learn the amount of few people, and I know John had to educate me and tell me that, hey, they, it's not really a, that many people. They just started letting them in the Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll, or the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But um, I think uh, Dre should have been at least in the top five uh, persons that was in it definitely before Missy up uh, motherfucking Elliot <laughs> shout out Missy um, do you find it odd that during the whole Will Smith um, controversy thing uh, where his assistant had come out and made those accusations that Jada Pinkett said they were going to sue and no one's really heard anything is that odd or no? You can't, you can't sue when it's the truth. <laughs> when it's the truth, you can't sue. Because all the moments, like they take a lot of detector tests. You pass a lot of detector tests, I have to take that judgment. And so when it's the truth, they can't. I mean, you know, I know y'all going to say, well, a lot of detector tests ain't, ain't, can't be held up or it's not in the court of law. But... I'm just saying, you know, it's true. It's factual. You know, now, whether the man walked in and saw him having sex with Will or Will giving sex to Dwayne like he says, that could be debatable. That could be considered a lie because there's three people that really can verify that, which would be the two and then the guy. So, yeah, you can debate that, but there's other people that has been saying this about Will and Dwayne, including myself, for the longest. And so all of those different accusations and, and possibles and, and stuff will come up. And so, yeah, uh, Miss Fat Joe, <laughs> Miss Fat Joe. Fat Joe, little brother. <laughs> Y'all see why I said that? Y'all see that picture? I say Fat Joe, little brother, um, made the statement that they were going to sue, but trust me, they're not going to sue anybody because they know things that people are saying about them, which is unfortunate because I'm one of those that believe whatever you're doing in your bedroom is your business. But it's when you start speaking it out, and they don't want to brought it out. They don't want to have the round table situation with, and, and, and expose that poor boy, August, I say poor boy, but Augustine and all of that. They did that for ratings or for views on a podcast and stuff like that. It wasn't like Augustine had really came out and was talking about it that much and, or brought it to the attention like they did. And so um, my whole point is, hey, dog, trust me. If y'all listen to anything Reggie been saying when y'all get me to talk about gossip, gossip like that, I've been telling y'all about Will and Jada. I done told y'all about that on five or six different occasions. My biggest uh, uh, interview that went on with, with Art the Dialogue before we even had before he even had cameras over there was done where he got like 1.8, 1.9 mi million views just talking about that. Uh, on his channel, when he and I used to just do them, you know, telling stories and him putting pictures up. And so, hey, there's no secret. 
But to answer your question, John, the reason why they ain't sued nobody because they can't. <laughs> they can't. And uh, it's unfortunate. But one thing I like about stuff like this is you see how shit turns, how it goes away? You remember in September, who was the big topic on YouTube, all over the YouTube? Keefy D. Keefy motherfucker D, right? That's September. October, November, who was it? It was uh, uh, Will Smith and Jada Book and all of that everybody was talking about. And then December, it was somebody. <laughs> I can't even think right now. But somebody had took over the internet and everybody was talking about then. And then, it was Diddy. I'm oh, sorry, thank you, John. My boy, P. Diddy, right? And now, hey, it's Cat Williams. I tell y'all, we forget and we move on from subjects quick as quick. And uh, shout out Cat Williams. Man, I love the best story that I done heard since this Cat Williams um, story came out or, or, or segment came out or what episodes came out or whatever. Uh, him, him marketing himself came out, <laughs> whatever y'all want to call it. The best one I got and I heard was with Boosie, my boy Boosie. Who I told y'all, I used to talk shit about Boosie. Boosie has grown on Reggie Wright. Reggie Wright is a Boosie fan for some reason. Don't know why, but I like that motherfucker Boosie. Oh. But the best story I heard is what Boosie said. Man, he said he was just had got out of prison. And y'all just don't know how when you're down on your luck and doing bad, how that helps when people look out. That's why I love John so much. And that's why I love Art the Dialogue, to be honest. Uh, even though I tap at his channel and stuff like that a little bit. Love Art the Dialogue personally. Uh, because, man, those dudes gave me exposure and gave me a break when I first got out of jail and got out of the hospital that helped me get back on my feet and be indebted to both of them. Mainly John. I mean, John more so, but but art as well. Uh, but I'm saying that just to say, because when you get out of those situations, people that look out for you, you remember. Y'all listen to a story that Boosie told. Hopefully John could play it. If not, y'all research it. Cat Williams a real bro. I came home, I ain't have nothing, bro. Cat Williams called me to his show, gave me front row seats, bro, called me to his show. And when I was leaving the show, I thought he threw me some in the car because it was wrapped up in a towel. But it was $15,000, bro. When I see him, I'm going to return the favor, bro. Whatever I got in my pocket. That dude did something for me, bro. That I get emotional talking about it, bro. Like, I really needed it at the time. And I wouldn't stay in nowhere. I mean, I was staying at a hotel with my kids in downtown New Orleans. I ain't even have a... Nowhere to stay it yet, bro. Where Boosie's told how he will always be indebted to Cat Williams because he went to a show and Cat Williams threw a towel to him. Not like put it in his hand and show it in front of everybody. Just kind of threw a towel to him. And kept it moving. He looked in the towel and it's $15,000 in there. Not embarrassing the man, putting him out there like, hey, I know you need this money. I mean, I want to look out for you and do that in front of people and all that. Just like, here, I know the situation. Stories like that I love hearing. Hope more they don't come out about Cat like that because I have always been a Cat Wills fan, but I'm more of a Cat Wills fan now than, than I have ever have been, especially after hearing that story. Shout out Cat Wills. Suge talked about on his podcast how he would always get Jimmy Iovine and his wife nice gifts for Christmas. And in return, I mean, he would get them like Rolexes and rings and stuff. And then in return, he would always get like these cards that had kind of like promise gifts in them. Uh, did he ever talk to you about that? And did you know about it before he spoke about it on his podcast? Suge has talked about that a few times now. I'm not sure if it was a uh, if it was furnishing in the house that I had heard, or uh, I think it was like building a sound system or 
a recording or something, a state of art studio or something like that into his house. You know, cause cause Sugar was big on those discs back then, watching movies and stuff like that. And uh, you remember those big laser discs and stuff like that? I think he wanted to put something like a a movie a, a screening room or something like that in one of his rooms in this house that he had uh, out in the valley. Man, y'all should have seen that pool. That nigga had the vision to, uh, cause Sugar lo loves water. He loves being in water, and he was going to have a uh, a swimming pool built like. Uh, I think raising water or something like that in his backyard. Uh, that a house he had in Encino it was going to be nice. And so this was Shug's pet project. The whole time that I knew him, <laughs> that nigga worked on that house. He had it before. I came around him in like 93, 94. And we worked on that house and we worked on the house until about 2001, 2002. And then he came home and he didn't want it no more. <laughs> and then he listed it up. And then he was, you know, it was up for sale to get rid of it. He didn't want it no more. But he was going to build a bad house out in Encino. Actually, right down the street from where you live at now, uh, Michael Conception. <laughs> well, you know about it. But anyway, uh, so this was a house in Encino that she was working on and talking about. I have heard that story, so she is just not sitting up there making up anything about that. But in fairness to Shug, or fairness to people, Shug bought everybody nice gifts around Christmas time. You know, Shug gets a bad rap for cheating people all the money and all of that, and I keep telling y'all, I I don't get it. I, I understand the royalty part where you want a statement, and I get mad at the credit card company and all of that. If they would just say, hey, you spent this, 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 and this, and don't show me where I spent it. You know, don't see it in black and white. And this is how much you owe. So I get it, I understand it, but trust me, trust me, the gifts, the things that she was buying that people wanted, he wasn't just buying stuff that people didn't want. People wanted these things, people loved it. They were smiling from ear to ear. When, you know, the chicks was probably gave him a job right there. The dudes was hugging him and kissing him and loving him. And so everything that people should have gave him, gave people, people wanted, needed and all of that. But I do understand the point, and I'm going to go back to it again. Now being older, that you just want to get paid what you feel you earned. But if that was the case, all of those motherfuckers would have been working at Walmart and then having to run up at the studio or whatever, the, you know. Like one person did. There's one dude that I always respected because he always had a job, um, CPO. Big CPO, Boss Hogg. I remember Boss Hogg was a, a cook at a hospital or something like that. And so that's why he only worked on the weekends, you know, come to the studio to work and stuff like that. And they would have had to do stuff like that. You know, to my point, Shar Jones is another one that just worked, you know, had her job. And then this was we'll work on the weekends where most of them would just be sitting around bored and going crazy and mind playing tricks on them because they would get those checks. I mean, but they didn't want to do nothing else or nothing extra. And then when they get the call to come to the studio, then they'd be like, you know. But I get, so I get that point and I get where they was like, hey, I, if you, I was waiting. I was ready to come and, and make more money or make you some more money and all of that. But um, I say all that to say Jimmy was, uh, not Shug, Jimmy, Shug was great, great with buying gifts and giving people great things. Not good things, great gifts. And it's unfortunate that he gets the bad rap that a lot of y'all believe about Suge being stingy and this and that, because that's not, not that was not Suge. That was not Suge at all. Um, no, it's not a, enough, enough of these stories being told about Suge and his generosity. I wish they would be. But trust me, a, a death row artist shined over all of the artists in the 90s, in the mid 90s. Where Death Row and Suge Knight messed up at, I'll say it again, but it was by not having a royalty department. Uh, and unfortunately, that royal department is affecting them more so today because the streaming does not keep going. You know, like Danny Boy, I heard him on, on Arts Channel where he was like saying he was happy. Uh, Cause now he getting you know checks. 
he getting royalty checks every quarter or whatever. And so that's where they got hurt. And so I understand both sides of the coin. But I'm just saying this and preaching this is because it wasn't like Suge was not generous. He just didn't do it correctly. So, yes, I believe that story totally of uh, what he said about the gifts that he gave Vicky and uh, and um, Jimmy. And that person that he's talking about, that one young lady that was in a traffic accident that uh, became paralyzed, and um, I don't know, he wouldn't go into it. That was his love. He loved that girl. And, um, yeah, shout out her. I remember meeting her people because he had bought her a van, a handicapped van and stuff like that. And once it got paid off, I had to uh, sign it over and so they can get the pink slip into their name and everything. Um, but, yeah, made me think about her on when he told that particular story. Yep. Um, I know we talked about it a, a, a while ago, last year, but um, do you still feel like the Tupac estate once they work out their stuff, they're still looking to sell their catalog? Oh, I believe that's why the, the sale hasn't happened yet. Uh, this, the sale hasn't happened yet to, 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 to this date. It's because they just waiting for everything to get worked out between in the court system with these uh, allegations that, and I'm not saying here to say that, that they true or false, you know, but that's made against Tom Wally and the estate by the family and, and my boy, shout out Donald David and, and Seth and now, uh, get worked out that, that, that will be a sale. Um, I don't understand why they not just, cause I know the number is 500 million to $600 million for this stuff. Why they just don't do it and give Tom Wally the 70, uh, $80 million and, Move on. You still got three to four hundred million dollars, but um, that ain't my call. Um, I hope Seth being advised right because I know how attorneys are. They will just, you know, keep padding up the bill, and one you just stay in court and stay in legal situation. But Donald David has been with uh, with that family since since 1996. Uh, to my knowledge, and so I don't think Donald Davis is that type of dude at all, um, and he's getting up, up in his age as well, so I'm pretty sure he's not that, that type of attorney. Um, but, yes, that sale is going to happen. It's, I find it strange now, not strange, but funny now. I got a letter from, because I've been in some communications with the estate regarding something, and the attorney that sent me a letter came from uh, Howard King <laughs> and his firm and Peter Paternal. And that was Jimmy's, um, Jimmy's best friend, Jimmy Ivey's best friend, which is Peter. And that's Dre's law firm and attorneys. And when I got that, that threw me off. It was like, damn. Tom Wally took Tupac stuff over there to, to Interscope people. <laughs> and I just thought that was a little strange that, uh, or Dre's people. But that also shows me, because Dre just did what? He just made that big deal go down with Universal and, and sold his rights uh, to the catalog. And so you do generally go to people that has experience in doing sales like that. And so that's what that showed. That's what I learned because I know that is the new uh, law firm for the uh, the estate. They haven't been with them that long, but um, yeah, uh, that's what's happening. Um, that's why I believe that. I hope this lawsuit gets settled this year, and hopefully then we can get some new music. Because trust me, as soon as somebody buy it, or all of this get worked out they will start working stuff. And as you see, y'all saw, there's a lot of unseen 
things left. And there's music that y'all think y'all heard that uh, y'all haven't heard. <laughs> I just say that. But it's not as much as y'all hear or believe. But there is some music that y'all haven't heard. And so that will hope, hopefully 2024 we we'll get the ball rolling where some things can happen. This lawsuit can get settled. But as I told y'all earlier, and uh, Tupac is still doing well. From any artist in the 90s, that would be Buster Ryan, Puffy, Biggie, Lauryn Hill, uh, the Fugees, Fugees, uh, EPMD, the Ghetto Boys, Scarface, Nelly, any artist from the 90s, Tupac Shakur. So more records on streaming than any of them. So show you that Tupac is still very, very relevant in to this, hap, this rap world. Oh, and don't forget Snoop Doggy Dog. <laughs> but show that he's still relevant without doing shows. And most of the artists are still doing shows and going to do shows. So, but I contribute that to you guys, people that's keeping this legacy, mainly uh, YouTubers such as John, uh, Art, uh, um, and John tell me of a lot of Instagram. I'm not a big Instagram guy, but there's some Instagram channels out there that, that works uh, this Tupac stuff great as well. And so, uh, um, John follows them all. John know everybody. He know everything about Tupac. Y'all think y'all Tupac. <laughs> and, uh, Tupac fans, y'all just don't know. John knows that he just shuts the f up on me when I'm talking and stay silent. But he knows this stuff. Because every time I bring it up, he'd be like, huh? That been out years. <laughs> you got that from so-and-so. And I'd be like, oh, okay. I thought I found something new. F you. Go back to sleep. <laughs> Can, yeah. can we talk about the um, <clears throat> the music video for Hail Mary and the concept behind it as far as the, the guys in the house and all that? Can you shed some light on, on the thought behind that one? Yeah, that was done um, after, you know, of course, after, of course, after shit, Tupac's death. And uh, it was done on the Machiavelli album. And y'all noticed it was the guys that were sitting in the chairs was like being hunted by Tupac for getting killed. Notice how many guys was in the video then. I think it was only three, to be honest, before. But I remember trying to put, uh, and I remember on the production set on that video, and I was so mad at myself afterwards because I was trying to get it and was mad that I didn't listen or follow up on the treatment of that video because I wanted to put the, in there back then, no motherfuckers in Seattle mirror, no hats with the ass on it. or. The South Siders, y'all don't know, back then used to wear uh, the uh, uh, San Diego Chargers. Uh, Junior Seha was a big football player, and he used to run wear the number 55. And they used to wear those because the fives looked like SS for South Side. Uh, the fives on the back of the San Diego. See, I know you mother South Side Chris. You little youngsters like, damn, y'all nigga know about that? Yeah, I tell you, I know everything about the about the 90s that was going on. Some of you little youngsters probably just thinking about the Seattle Seahawks hats uh, or, or Mariners hats. But yeah, y'all forgot about some of y'all OGs to tell you how that's what their big trademark back then was the, the San Diego Charger jerseys. But, and why y'all wore 55? Because it looked like SS. But I wanted to put that in the video. And that was my way of throwing little hints even back then. Cause like I tell y'all, Y'all the only ones that don't believe that Southside Crips had something to do with the death and that we didn't know the Southside Crips had something to do with the death of Tupac. And, uh, but that was the, the treatment and that was that video. And, uh, and, and the mother approved. So that show you she didn't believe that conspiracy bullshit that y'all ended up believing later on about the police and Reggie and Suge and everybody else because she had... She has say so as well. Tom Wally has say so as well, and and you know Molly input, and they wouldn't approve the video like that if um, 
if, um, you know, they didn't believe it as well or, 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 or believe that to be true or to believe uh, what uh, the small donor believes with this government bullshit. But, um, and so that was the, the treatment. That's why that treatment of the video was done uh, where the guys were in the house watching TV and stuff and they were feeling like they were getting hunted by the ghost of Tupac and all of that. So that's what the uh, the theme of, of that video. That's still one of my all-time favorite songs, Hail Mary, other than White Man World. You know, I always talk about All Eyes on Me album, but whenever y'all ask me about songs that I really love, <laughs> they, they seem to always come off of Machiavelli. I'm a weird mother. John, I never asked you. What's your favorite Tupac song? Uh, um, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> probably, probably unconditional love, maybe. Who unconditional love? Boy, mm -hmm. that's a hammer Watch song. That's Watch hammer how many song. people in the comments though? E well, not I say that, and then out of spite they'll say no. But I think a lot of people like that song. All right, y'all tell us in the comment section y'all favorite Tupac. I really want to hear from you guys. That's in the community. What's y'all favorite uh, Tupac uh, song? I like one of Dad's songs too. Uh, you can't see me. I like that one. Uh, with the one with the uh, with the um, Pee Wee Herman's uh, sample in it. I like that one. Can't think of the name of it right now. But yeah. Ambition of a writer. Ambition of a writer. Yeah. Yep. So y'all tell us.